Welcome back, Petapix of viewers. It is Chris Nichols here coming to you from Poolside in lovely San Jose, California. Lovely? It is lovely, Jordan. I will take a California winter over an Alberta winter any day long. But yes, it is winter here. And so maybe it's a little bit cold. As you can see, I'm dressed up nice. But we're here for a fantastic event because we just got our hands on this Samsung S24 Ultra. And we're going to give you guys our first impressions right now. So before we get to the rest of our first impressions review, I think we can all agree that if you're even shopping for a premium smartphone in the first place, you might need to save some pennies somewhere else to really make it fit your budget. And a great way to do that is to buy your pre-owned camera gear on KH.com. You can save up to 40% of the retail price. You know that the experts at KH are going to make sure that everything's certified, working well, and you always have generous return policies if you get something and you're not happy with it. KH lets you upgrade your gear without having to upgrade your budget. And also remember that if you need some extra cash, you can sell your gear to KH. You know that they're going to evaluate it effectively, they're going to pay you promptly, and you're going to get a fair price. So what are you waiting for? If you need that premium smartphone and you need to save some pennies, check out KH.com. That's why they're our preferred partner for pre-owned gear here at Petapixel. So just to give you guys some context of what we're doing here today, we've had hands-on time with the phones. We got to see a lot of the features, a lot of the menus, controls. We got to ask a lot of questions, but we didn't get to take photos or really review the cameras. That is coming. We will have time with the S24 Ultra, and we are going to put it through a thorough test here in California. So definitely stay tuned for that. But what I want to cover today is... We did get to see a lot of interesting features and play with it as well as the press launch and it brought up some questions and also some answers and that's really what I want to share with you guys today. We also do a podcast as well with one of the Samsung executives so that's also something you want to watch for because we'll ask a lot of questions there as well. Hopefully get some of the answers that we're all looking for. So let's get to it. Look at this lovely lemon tree. We can't even grow these back home in Alberta. It's minus 45 Celsius right now but you know what else wasn't a lemon? The hardware in the S23 Ultra. <laughs> <coughs> That was, that was your joke. Anyways, a lot of that great hardware has actually moved over to the S24 Ultra, so let's talk about that next. We're getting the same 0.6 time ultra-wide 12 megapixel camera that we had in the S23 Ultra. We're getting the same 200 megapixel one times wide lens as well, and we are getting the same three time zoom 10 megapixel camera, which up to 12 megapixels with a little bit of, you know, digital trickery. So what is new is the new five time zoom lens. So this is a 50 megapixel sensor. That's a big upgrade, and Samsung's saying that it's collecting 60% more light. The S23 Ultra did have a 10 times zoom camera, and I think Samsung was saying not a lot of their users were really utilizing such a big zoom range. The S24 Ultra does give you a 10 times option. It is a crop of the 50 megapixel sensor, you know, giving you basically a 12 megapixel 10 times zoom if you want it. You can also go beyond that, you know, 30 or 100. I mean, you can push that where it's just really up the sh out of those photos. And an upgraded 5 times telephoto lens does make a lot more sense to me. I mean, I would use that range a lot more than a 10 times zoom myself, especially for things like portraiture. But also it makes sense because the other manufacturers, Apple and Google, well, last year they both updated their 5 times telephoto lenses. So Samsung, as I mentioned, is saying this lens collects 60% more light than before, but they're still being very hush-hush about what that means. We can't really get sensor size or anything like that yet. We will definitely dig into that. It is important to note that the Samsung lens is a 5 times zoom with an F3 3.4 aperture. Now both Apple and Google have f2.8 apertures on their telephoto lenses. The Apple one is a 12 megapixel sensor but the Google Pixel is using a quad Bayer 50 as well and it certainly was a very nice lens when we tested it. Okay so if the hardware hasn't changed that much other than the five times zoom lens what has changed is that Samsung has added their cognitive AI to more than just their front-facing selfie camera. You now get it on all of their lenses. And so this is going to change a lot when it comes to the editing features, which we're going to talk about next. Oh, damn, I lost. So, of course, AI-based photography is a big push on a lot of the smartphones nowadays. And so Samsung is doing it in a two-fold way as well, both onboard AI in the phone as well as a cloud-based system after the fact. And so on the phone, you actually have a lot of powerful features. I mean, a lot of classic stuff. You can select things that you don't like and erase them. Them. You can take shadows off of people's faces. You could do the reflection erasing feature where, you know, you can take reflections of people out of windows or maybe it'll work for airplane windows and stuff like that. It's actually very quick, looks very intuitive. I like the fact that I can select things either with my finger or the S Pen, anything like that. And what the Samsung S24 Ultra will do now is it'll also make suggestions for you on what it thinks that you should edit. So it'll analyze all of your photos, every single one that you take, then look at it and bring up suggestions and say, oh, this has got shadows on a person's face you might want to take that out or you know this background is a little bit busy you might want to blur that it's kind of neat how it'll do that now Samsung has also said that their 
AI technology is going to look at all the photos that all Samsung users are taking here and it's going to then see what kind of changes it can make. It's going to learn from the entire database. Now as well, it will also learn from you on what you like to do to your photos, what preferences you like to change. So if you warm up your pictures a lot or if you seem to take out certain subjects or just shoot certain kinds of photographs often, it will then learn from that as well and make suggestions that are more based on your personal style, how you like to shoot and try to simplify that whole process. That's quite interesting. And again, if you find that that's a little bit too invasive or a little bit too creepy, you can opt out of that absolutely and then just make changes yourself or just go with the base suggestions without all of that interacting with all the other people out there on the planet. Now as well, there is the cloud-based AI editing, and this really seems to be more focusing on generative fill. You can absolutely opt out of this as well. But I actually will say, in my opinion, from what I've seen, it works a little bit faster, a little bit more seamlessly than what I saw on the Google Pixel with their cloud-based AI editing. Uh, the example that they showed us was a skateboarder. You know, you could select them with the S Pen or just double click on them. It's pretty smart about how it makes subject selections, move them up into the sky, and then it will not only move them, but fill in the space that they were occupying. You know, if you want to readjust the frame, it will rebuild the sky in the foreground as well appropriately. You know, they also took out a light post that they found distracting. From what we've seen, I mean, this is something I absolutely want to test myself when I get the phone. It's pretty seamless. There's a little bit of haloing thing around the uh, skateboarder, though. And you can see that one of the legs is a little bit blurry where it wasn't before. So, you know, it's still not perfect, but I'm going to test the hell out of that and really see how far we can push it before it looks terrible. So video upgrades on the S24 Ultra are fairly minor, I and mean, we can still shoot 8K like we were able to do before, but there are some things I do want to point out. You can now shoot ultra high def at 120 frames per second, and not as a specific slow-mo feature, like it'll record audio, that's pretty cool. Uh, you can also now go between all of your lenses while recording, so you can zoom between all of your lenses. It does look jarring, but it's kind of a neat feature without having to stop and then change lens and then start a record again. You can even flip to the selfie camera during recording if you want to. Uh, another nice feature though that looked pretty cool is a new slow-mo AI tool that you can do in playback after the fact. So any video feature that I take, I can then just play it back, use my finger to select the part where I want it to slow-mo, just hold down the screen and it'll record that. I can move that frame as well, I can trim things. And what's really neat there is by default to go to quarter speed, I can adjust it as well to half speed. It'll automatically adjust that given whatever frame per second rate I chose to use. And it's basically adding in generative frames in between to give you those extra frames for the slow-mo. This reminds me a lot of what we used to see way back in the day with things like Twixter, but that took like hours to process. This is very quick, very seamless, and honestly, I didn't see a lot of weird digital artifacting. It looked pretty convincing. Now, image stabilization for video has been improved across the board. It now records gyroscopic data automatically for all of the lenses you're going to use. As well, the optical stabilization has been improved. The new 5x telephoto has an image stabilizer. The 3x zoom has an image stabilizer. And the main camera's image stabilizer has been physically improved over the old system. So that's going to be great not only for video, but photos as well. So Samsung, of course, is famous not only for their phones, but their displays as well. And we now have quite the upgrade here. I mean, even compared to the competition, this display will now give you 2,600 nits of peak maximum brightness. You can see the difference compared even to the older S23 Ultra and just how much brighter that is. But this is also nice because we now have photographs that are capable of displaying HDR. So, of course, like any smartphone, you want to make sure you're shooting the HE format, but we are now getting photos that give you that expanded dynamic range, not only for a lot of displays and, of course, obviously on the phone, itself, but also a lot of software programs also use the same protocol. So we're going to get just that beautiful dynamic range, brighter brights, deeper shadows showing on any display or software that's capable of using it. I also want to talk about the expert RAW mode. There's a few things in here that I'm quite curious to test out. So as I mentioned before, we've got the exact same main camera lens and sensor that we had in the S23 Ultra. It's their 200 megapixel sensor. And on the S24 Ultra, we're still capped at 50 megapixel RAWs. I don't know why we can't do 200 megapixel files in RAW format. We absolutely can still get 200 megapixel compressed image files, but not RAWs. We're capped at 50 megapixels, although Samsung has now added a 24 megapixel RAW mode. You know, 
know if you feel that you don't need the extra detail and you want to have smaller files to work with. So I guess that's a nice feature to have. There is a cool new addition. It's an ND filter. I think it goes down to a one one twenty eighth. I mean, that's pretty cool. It might even go further than that. I want to test that out. And in this mode, it's going to do something we've seen like a, what an OM system or Olympus do, where it'll take multiple files and then anything that's stationary will stay stationary. But then anything that's moving like rivers, water, you know, that kind of stuff, it will then give you that nice blur without having to use an ND filter and still handheld. So it seems like Samsung's got a lot of stuff cooking on the fire. I don't want, this is the last one. I'm not doing oh, any, no, no, it was terrible. Oh God. Okay. So clearly we have a lot of things to test in our full review. I am excited to see what a lot of these new AI features are going to do. You know, I can't help but draw a lot of similarities to the Google Pixel 8. I mean, there are a lot of those same kind of AI based features, both in camera and cloud based. I want to see how effective these are, really test them under our own situations. Curiously, Samsung didn't really talk about their portrait mode at all. And portrait mode is something they've struggled with. We've seen improvements both on the iPhone and the Google products. So I'm also going to test the portrait mode, the depth mapping, you know, how well it can blur backgrounds without it looking like cardboard cutouts. We'll definitely test that as well. If you guys have any questions, leave those below. We'll definitely look at those as well and factor them into our review. Absolutely. Please do watch our podcast, not only on this product, but all of our other podcasting episodes. You can see it on this exact same channel or all of your favorite podcasts podcasting apps. All you have to do is search for the Petapixel podcast and you'll find it. Thanks so much for joining us here, guys. We'll see you soon with a lot more on the Samsung S24 Ultra.